in this video here, we're going to take a look at the harmonic identities. So for expressions of the form a cos x plus or minus b sine x, where a and b are constants, we can write these expressions as a sine function only or as a cosine function only. And the way that we do this is by using something called the harmonic identities, sometimes known as the R formulae. And you'll see a little bit later on in this video why they're sometimes called that. So for a and b that belong to the set of real numbers here, a sine x plus or minus b cos x is identical to r sine of x plus or minus alpha. And we also have a cos x plus or minus b sine x is identical to r cos of x minus or plus alpha. So in this case here then for the harmonic identities, r is always strictly greater than zero and alpha is always between zero and 90 degrees or zero and pi over two if we're working in radians. And r here is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. And r cos alpha is equal to a. And r sine alpha is equal to b. So I think just looking at this here, um, you know, to get us started, I don't think it makes a lot of sense intuitively here. The actual process of using the harmonic identities is actually quite straightforward. And the way that we do this is by something called equating coefficients. So I think the best way to demonstrate this here is to just run through a couple of practice questions. So let's just get started here then with question one. So let's get started here then with question one. So for question one, we have two parts to this question. So let's begin with part A. So for part A, then it asks us to write three sine theta plus four cos theta in this given form here, where r is greater than zero and alpha is between zero and 90 degrees here. So to get us started then, we want this form here, right? So we want r sine of theta plus alpha. So let's just write this down here underneath. So for part A then, we have r sine of theta plus alpha. Okay, so what we're going to do here then is use the compound angle formula. So what we can do then is write this as, so we get r times by, so now using the compound angle formula here then, for sine of theta plus alpha, so we get sine theta cos alpha, so sine theta cos alpha, plus cos theta, plus cos theta sine alpha. Okay, like so. So clearly then, if we just multiply through by r here, what we've got then for three sine theta plus four cos theta, we've got three sine theta plus four cos theta. This is identical to, so we get r, sine theta cos alpha, make sure I get the variables right way around here. So sine theta cos alpha, and then we get our cos theta sine alpha. Okay, so our cos theta sine alpha, like so. And all we're gonna do here then is equate coefficients, right? So what I can see then is for the sine theta term here, right? That corresponds to this term here. So in that case, then I can see that r cos alpha is equal to three here. So therefore r cos alpha is equal to three. And then doing the same here with this cosine term, I've got four cos theta is equal to r cos theta sine alpha. So what I can see then is r sine alpha is equal to four here, just equating coefficients, right? So r sine alpha, is equal to four here. So in that case then, if we call this equation two here, and we call this equation one, what I'm gonna do here is take equation two and divide that by equation one. So in that case then, what we get here is r sine alpha all over r cos alpha, like so. And that's equal to then four over three here. We get four over three there. Okay. Well, this left hand side here then that is simply tan alpha, right? So we get tan alpha. So tan alpha is equal to four over three, like so. And then finally, here, if we just want alpha, we just take tan inverse of both sides here. So alpha is equal to tan inverse or arc tan, whichever you prefer, of four over three. 
Okay. And just using the calculator here then, what you should hopefully get is 53.1 degrees here. Okay. So that's the value of alpha. Don't forget we do also need R here. So nice and straightforward for R then. So for R here, we simply use Pythagoras. So this is the square root then. So we do three squared plus four squared. So three squared plus four squared. And hopefully you recognize straight away that this is one of our Pythagorean triples. So we get the square root here of nine plus 16. Which gives us the square root of 25. We get the square root of 25 here, which is equal to 5. Okay. So we've pretty much done the first part of this question here anyway. All I need to do now is to write this part here, this expression, in this form, right? As the question actually asks us to do. So we've got 3 sine theta. We've got 3 sine theta plus 4 cos theta. And that, well, that is going to be identical then. This is the harmonic identities, right? So this is identical to R sine of theta plus alpha. So for R then, we got five. So we get five sine of theta plus alpha. So we get theta plus alpha, but alpha is 53.1 degrees here. Like so. And there we have it. So this here then, this is our solution here, okay? It is important that you do express it in the required form, right? Don't just, you know, evaluate R and alpha and leave it as that. We do need to express it in this form here, okay? So there we have it. That gives us the solution to part A. Let's just quickly clear the screen here and have a go at part B. So we've now cleared the screen here. Let's have a go then at part B here. So for part B, it asks us to find the minimum and maximum value of free sign for plus four cos theta. So what we're going to do here then is use this form that we established in part A using the harmonic identities to help us find the minimum and maximum value of three sine theta plus four cos theta. So for part B then, let's start here by finding the minimum value. So for the minimum value here, so for the minimum value here then, like we said, we're just going to consider this form here then. So we've expressed this as a single function in terms of sine here. We have five sine of theta plus 53.1 degrees here. So to find the minimum value of this then, all we need to actually consider here is what is the minimum value of sine? Well, the minimum value of sine, hopefully you know this, is minus one, right? So in that case, then we get five times the minimum of the sine function here, which is minus one. We get five times minus one here which gives us minus five there. Nice and straightforward. And we then just consider a similar approach here for the maximum value. So for the max value here, all we do then is consider the maximum of the sine function here, which in this case is positive one. So we get five times by one, which again, nice and straightforward here, would simply give us five there, okay? nice and straightforward there that gives us the solution to question one so to finish with here then let's just have a go at one more question so what we've got here then is question two and as we can see right the layout to this question here is almost identical to the previous question so part a is just based around using the harmonic identities and then part b is a follow-on just based around the minimum and maximum value and for part B, then again, similar to the previous question, we will just use our answer from part A to help us answer part B here. So let's get started then with part A here. So for part A then, it asks us to write 5 sine theta plus 12 cos theta in this given form here of r cos of theta minus alpha, where r is greater than 0, and alpha is between 0 and 90 degrees here. So as we've already mentioned, then part A is just based around the harmonic identities. So to get us started here, right, we want to express it in this form here. So what we need to do then is use the compound angle formulae for cos of theta minus alpha, and then just times that by r here. So in that case then, let's just write this down. So r cos of theta minus alpha here then, this is equal to, so what do I get then? So I get r cos theta cos alpha, so r cos theta cos alpha, and then we get plus, 
So plus R sine theta, sine alpha. Okay. Now, in this case here then, what we're going to do is equate coefficients. So what I've got then is 5 sine theta plus 12 cos theta. And that is equal to here in this case then, so R cos theta cos alpha. So R cos theta cos alpha plus R sine theta sine alpha. So R sine theta sine alpha. Okay. Now you don't have to write this step out here like this, but I do think it makes it a little bit easy to see then uh, once we equate the coefficients here. So what do we get then once we equate coefficients here? Well, this 5 sine theta, that corresponds to this term here, right? So in that case then, what I can see here is that R sine alpha is equal to 5 here. So in that case then, R sine alpha is equal to 5. And then what else do we get here? Well, in that case, then the 12 cos theta term here corresponds to this term here. So in that case, then what I can see is R cos alpha is equal to 12 here. So R cos alpha is equal to 12 here. Okay. And all I'm going to do now is take this equation here. Let's call that equation one. And I'm going to divide that by the second equation here, which we'll call equation two. Okay. So if we do that here, then what do we get? So we get R sine alpha all over R cos alpha, like so. And that will be equal then to 5 over 12. So we get 5 over 12 there. Well, R sine alpha over R cos alpha, that would simply give us tan alpha here. In that case, then we get tan alpha here. So tan alpha is equal to 5 over 12. And then finally here, right, if we just want alpha, all I do here then is I take tan inverse or arc tan, whichever you prefer to call that, of both sides here. So in that case then, alpha is equal to tan inverse of 5 over 12 here. So tan inverse of 5 over 12. Just put this into your calculator here. And if you do this correctly, then what you should hopefully get is 22.6 degrees here. Okay. So we found the value of alpha. We now need to find the value of R here. So R is nice and straightforward, right? So let's do that up here. So for R then, this is simply an application of Pythagoras here. We take the square root. So we do 5 squared plus 12 squared here. So we take the square root then of 5 squared plus 12 squared. And hopefully you might recognize here that this is one of our Pythagorean triples. So what do we get then? We get the square root of 25 plus 144. So 25 plus 144. So that gives us the square root here of 169, which is equal to 13 there. Okay, so R is equal to 13. So all that remains to do here then is actually express this expression here in this form, right? Where R is equal to 13 and alpha is equal to 22.6. Let's just do that here to finish with. So therefore, 5 sine theta plus 12 cos theta is identical to, because obviously this is based around the harmonic identities here, so it is identical to, so it's R cos of theta minus alpha. So R is 13. I get 13 cos of theta minus alpha, where alpha is 22.6 degrees here. So theta minus 22.6 degrees there. Okay. And there we have it. So don't forget that you do need to actually express this here in this form, um, as we've done here to conclude with, right? The question does ask you to do that does ask you to write it in this form here. So don't forget to do that just to finish with our part A there. So that gives us the solution to part A there. So we've got part B here. So let me just quickly clear the screen then, and then we'll attempt part B. So we've cleared the screen here. Let's have a go then at answering part B here. Now, 
to answer part B, you will need the answer from part A here. Now, obviously, we have cleared the screen, but just in case you don't have it to hand, I have also just included that as well on the screen here. So feel free to use that as we answer part B. So for part B, then, it asks us to find the minimum and maximum value of this expression here. So for part B, then, how do we find the minimum and maximum value of this expression here? Well, hopefully you might notice straight away then that we have this here within the denominator. So 5 sine theta plus 12 cos theta. And that's the exact same as what we was working with in part A, right? So again, 5 sine theta plus 12 cos theta. So what that would suggest then is we're going to use the harmonic identity that we established here in part A to help us answer part B. So let's just start then by rewriting this fraction here. So this is equal to, so we get four all over, so what I get here then is 27 plus five sine theta plus 12 cos theta. But we can rewrite this here then using the harmonic identity that we established in part A. So I get 27 plus 13 cos of theta minus 22 six degrees here. Okay, so let's start then by evaluating the minimum value here of this expression. So for the minimum value here, so for the minimum value here, right, let's just think about this for a moment here. So we've got this fraction here. Now, there's no way that I can make the fraction here negative, right? So in terms of the minimum value here, what we actually need to do, right, is maximize the denominator. The larger the denominator here is, the smaller the actual division is, right? So in that case, then, what's the maximum here of my denominator? Well, we obtain the maximum by considering the maximum of the cosine function. So the max of the cosine function is simply 1. So I get 13 times by 1 here, which is 13 plus 27, and we get a denominator of so the maximum possible denominator here is simply 40. So we get 4 over 40. As we've just said, then we get 4 over 40, which we can simplify to give us 1 over 10 there. Okay. So the minimum value here then of this expression is simply 1 over 10. And now for the maximum value here then, as you would imagine, this follows in a similar fashion. So for the maximum value. Now, rather than considering what the maximum of the denominator here, then we now just consider what the minimum is, right? So what's the minimum of the cosine function? Well, that's simply minus one. So I get 13 times by minus one, which is minus 13 plus 27. And that gives us 14 there. So what I get then is four over 14 which we can simplify here to give us two over seven. Okay, and there we have it. So we've got the minimum value there of one over 10 and the maximum value of two over seven. So that actually gives us the solution there to the very last question, question two. And that brings us to the end then of this video here on the harmonic identities.